To make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee, one clover and a bee, and reverie. The reverie alone will do if bees are few. That saying by Emily Dickinson could well apply to Nechusa grasslands in north-central Illinois. The grasslands include some rare native plants that offer a glimpse of what the land looked like before, af just after the Ice Age. It's been restored by a group of spirited volunteers. Producers Elizabeth Meister and Dan Collison have this profile of some of the volunteers of Nechusa. My name's Jay Stacy, and my first season was 1995 out here. On my first trip, I wanted to see a grasshopper sparrow, and I heard they had um, upland plover here, and I had never seen either bird. And I drove up, and sitting on the sign right off of the driveway there, and there was a grasshopper sparrow, and he was singing, and it was like, oh boy. And before I got out of my car, an upland sandpiper lifted right off this ridge here. That was a real nice beginning to it. Let's go look at this vista. This is real Illinois. This land's been in recovery for about 18 years. Illinois, uh, it's estimated that less than one-tenth of one percent of original grassland prairie is left. And that's an astounding loss. You can search any third world country, Africa, war-torn, politically unstable, and I don't know that you could come up with one that's destroyed 99.9% .9 of its prime ecotype. And these top ridges we're standing on with the pretty orange little blue stem were uh, highly degraded pasture 20 years ago. And uh, through the efforts of the steward here, removing cedars and multiflora rows, and then restoring the natural component of fire, the land has really beautifully recovered. And what you're looking at here is the real deal. We think this is pretty much what this land looked like. The vegetation that's here is vegetation that formed after the last ice age. I work construction. I went down to Central Florida and worked in thoroughbred breeding farms. I was going to get in the thoroughbred racing industry. I sold clothing down a water tower place, but none of it amounted to anything. And when I came out here, I, I found something I thought was worth doing. Here's a little uh, mountain mint. Crush that up and smell it. I would prefer Thomas Aquinas, who in 1250, I think, in one of his summas, wrote, The perfection of God is made manifest in the universe in proportion to the number of species, not in proportion to the number of individuals of a single species. So when you and I see this beautiful diversity of life forms, it's really the perfection of God being manifest. And any loss of that beautiful diversity is a loss of that perfection. What we're going to do this afternoon is go up the hill and collect some of the goldenrods and asters that are still here. My name is Tom Mitchell, and I've been volunteering. I think this will be our 12th year out here at Neshusa, and we were one of these people that uh, came out here and met Jay, and he taught us how to do this work. Tom is just recently retired. He did all this 65-acre piece, working 40 hours a week at his full-time job. I was a revenue officer with the Internal Revenue Service in Downers Grove, Illinois, until I retired this summer. So it was a nice change of pace to be able to get away from that kind of work and come out here. We're just basically lopping off the heads of these aromatic asters sort of a chocolate brown seed, and there's still a fair amount left up here. I didn't know any of this stuff. I've never taken a biology or a botany course in my life, but twice a week on your hands and knees, you eventually learn the names of these various violets that you're collecting. And, and then it's, you know, your curiosity. I collected this plant. Let me read about it. The word amateur has been debased in our language to, you know, say something's amateurish, it's a shoddy job or something. But 
The word comes from the Latin root to love. And it means somebody's doing something for the love of it. And when you get people doing things for the love of it, then it shows in the product. We are just about arriving at a five acre new planting. Uh, it's a former cornfield. We are with Mary Scott, who is our 86 year old volunteer. Six and a half now. 86 and a half, thank you. I'm just Mary Scott, and I'm just here to do what I can help do. I've learned several things in the years I've been here. I've learned that two good feet and two capable hands do make a difference. It's a rolling terrain, and Mary Scott is standing in the middle of the field with her pail with burr oak acorns and a planting tool. I'm going to plant acorns, burr oaks. So, stick the tool in the ground, push it forward, lean over, which is good exercise, drop your acorn in, pull your dirt up so you're covering it, and tap it. Say good night, acorn. I was born and raised on a farm. I had my toes in the ground. And I got dirt between my toes. <laughs> Some of these things take tender, loving care. And patience is my long suit. I got lots of it. The native animals give you your report card. You know, they tell you, did you do a good job? And when you have the threatened native birds nesting in the piece, that's your report card. I guess it was about eight years ago we heard one male Henslow sparrow singing and he sang for about a month and couldn't find a mate and then he moved on and we thought oh well the next year we had two mated pairs and the next year eight and the next year 22 and now the place is jumping with Henslow sparrow so it's a case of an endangered bird restarting itself just because it had the habitat to do it. Whoops! Didn't get that covered. We can do better than that. It's like looking at children. I can see what all of the years of what Scotty and I did together to raise those kids. There they are, and it's unbelievable. It's the same with the plants, patience. You don't see the results in six months or one year or two years. You never quit trying. I'll never live long enough to see the total results, but I'm helping build it. Our story on Natusa Grasslands was produced by Dan Collison and Elizabeth Meister for Long Haul Productions in association with Chicago Public Radio.